All right, all right. Good evening, my fellow freedom, freedom uh, fellow freedom fighters. Uh, this is such a beautiful occasion. Welcome to day two of the 79th annual state convention for Georgia NAACP. Always fighting forward. We're always fighting forward. I'm your moderator this evening, uh, Chair Kyle S. Smith, uh, for the state chapter of Georgia NAACP, and also for the Bullitt County branch here. I want to welcome you all. Make sure everybody's safe and sound. Um, just a couple of notes for us this evening. If you can, let's please, please make sure our phones are muted and that we do not have videos on. I know that's very important for us. Uh, we have an agenda we're going to follow fairly quick, fairly quickly tonight, just to make sure everybody has enough time to listen to the candidates and listen to everything we have going on this evening. All right. So to get us started now, we're going to have a basic, basic little overview of our mission here. The mission of the National Association of the Advancement of Colored People is to ensure political, educational, social, and economic equality of rights for all persons and to eliminate racial hatred and racial discrimination. So we just wanna make sure that we keep that in the forefront as we keep going and we keep pushing with our fellow freedom fighters. I wanna thank you all just so much for coming. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open this up with our opening prayer and for, what, and for that we'll have our very esteemed pastor Johnny Quiller from Bryan, the Bryan County president and also the pastor for Restoration Worship Center in Richmond Hill. So Reverend Johnny Quiller, please, would you please start us off with an opening prayer? To our esteemed Madam President Pierce and to all the members of the Georgia State Conference, let us bow our heads. Oh dear Heavenly Father God, oh Lord, we just thank you today. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for starting us on our way and giving us another chance to make a difference in this world. Oh Lord, we know that you created us in your own image and in your likeness, but we know that sin has damaged the minds of men and women throughout the world. And because of that, Lord, there is injustice and there is carelessness and there is disregard for the rights of many people. Oh, Lord, we know that when you have been excluded and when you have been left from the hearts and the mind of men and women, the inevitable result is that people will suffer. And Lord, this is why we see so much injustice and corruption taking place in the world today. But Lord, we pray that you will right all the wrongs that are taking place in our world and that you will vindicate those that have been truly mistreated. And oh, God, Father God, keep us keep us from trying to take matters into our own hands for vengeance is yours. Oh Lord, we ask that you reveal the good works you have planned in us, the goals that you have set before us and your vision for our success. Oh Lord, open up our eyes that we may see the needs of others and open up our eyes, Lord, that we open up our hearts so that we may feel the pain of others. Oh God, open up our ears so that we may hear the cry of others. Oh God, let us not be afraid to defend the weak. Let us not be afraid to defend the poor. Lord, open up our eyes and show us where love and hope and faith are needed. Oh God, use us, the NAACP, as a weapon to bring about the peace to this world, and a world where peace is built with justice and justice is guided by love. Empower us to find joy in doing good for others. Lord, give us guidance, give us inspiration, give us courage, and Lord, give us strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Quiller, for that wonderful prayer this evening. It gets, oh, man, it gets me going. It gets me excited. It gets the juices flowing, man, because when the Lord is with you, who can be against you? We're going to keep it going this, this evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have our welcome and greetings here from our second vice president and also the president for Bartow County, Bartow County, excuse me, uh, Vice President Dexter Benning. Would you please get us going and get us started? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Thank you, uh, fellow Freedom Fighters. Good evening, Freedom Fighters. On behalf of our state president, Ms. Barbara Pierce, and the entire executive committee, we welcome you all to the 79th annual virtual state convention. As Bishop Jackson said last night, we have to inform, mobilize, and organize. 
so we can always fight forward. So again, we welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you to sit back, relax. We're gonna have a great uh, state convention this evening and we're just gonna uh, enjoy this and honor this. And again, we thank all the participants, all the branches from throughout the state that are on tonight. And we're just looking forward to continue to do the work that we're called to do. Thank you. All right, we're gonna go ahead and lift every voice and sing. Let's go ahead and get it going today. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our angels sing, rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud. Dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the faith that the present has brought us. Facing the Right, lift every voice and sing. Make sure and we make sure we put ourselves together, feel ourselves in the music, feel ourselves in the flow, feel ourselves in the power. That's all we got going on. That's all we can go doing going forward. Membership appeal, um, calls to action. What's going to happen for our membership this evening? We're going to play a brief little video here just to get us going and make sure that we really, really hog and tie ourselves into that membership and how we can make sure we grow our numbers and strengthen our num numbers for years to come. Organization who wants equal rights for everyone? Well, the NAACP is an organization for you. Help us bring light to the world. NAACP is an organization that was founded in 1909 by W.E.B. Du Bois and Ida B. Wells. The group was formed due to the growing rate of violence against African Americans. In 1915, the organization published a pamphlet about protesting the Birth of a Nation movie. They protested the movie and as a result successfully stopped the film from being shown in Chicago, Denver, St. Louis, Pittsburgh, and Kansas City. On July 28, 1917, the NAACP orga organized the largest civil rights protest in United States history. The purpose for organizing this protest was to highlight the importance of bringing an end to lynching, Jim Crow laws, and violent attacks against African Americans. Help bring equality to your community and the world by joining the W. The NAACP, unifying the country as the land of the free and equal, not the land of the separated. Join the NAACP now. Go, go do it now. Time's ticking. Time's ticking. Time's ticking. Right now. What's taking us so long? What is taking us so long to get our members involved? It's so important for us today, tomorrow, next day, and the next year to continue to push for our members to get involved and continue to push for member drives, continue to push for our membership in general so that we can keep going strong, keep fighting, and keep going forward, okay? We definitely want to get these things rolling out right now. So we want to just jump into AXO as well. I know for those who saw us last night, we saw an excellent awardee 
uh, come through and just give us a great harmony and great listen to what's going on. But a lot of people don't know exactly what AXO is, and that's the Afro-Academic Cultural Technology uh, and Scientific Olympics that we have here. So. I competed in AXO in high school um, uh, three years in a row um, nationally, uh, four years in a row locally. As a competitor back in the day, I connected with so many other teens on my level and I was introduced to so many other art forms that these young people have and it just changed my life because I could see how amazing they are, how much more they're willing to push and the excellence that comes with being part of AXO. The youth development, uh, the time that goes into it, the, the standard and bar of excellence only, you know, that um, that is a mandate here is just is incredible and it's challenging and it's, it, it causes you to level up every single time. Children want it to do powerful things and say powerful things and they needed a platform to do it. And Axel was that platform, whether anybody truly taught you that or you realized it. Having friends, my buddy Robert Prather winning in engineering, um, he built a freaking plane, you know, like, like, and is now, you know, working with Boeing. So it's like, it's just amazing that for many of us, it starts with what AXO invests in and, and AXO invested in me. AXO is our platform for saying dream, dream and dream big. And that's amazing for us. So the AXO awardees and making sure that everybody's involved. A lot of times some of our youth don't know exactly what they can do outside of the walls of their environment. And that's fine because that's what they have us here for as the NAACP to help guide and culture and bring our children forward. The AXO awards are definitely something that takes pride. I know me personally is something that I've taken pride in for a long time. And that's something that I think we can continue to push to our members, continue to push to our local units that, hey, we can bring our children together. We can show them accomplishments that they can only dream about doing and having it as their reality. Uh, so in that regard, we also have an AXO awardee that's gonna come through and show us just, just a little just, tiny video of just what they can do, the talent that they have and the talent that we can so, so treasure going forward in the future. Hello, my name is Shanae O'Connor and I'm from Powder Springs, Georgia. Today, I'm representing Henry County Youth Council, Unit 574-B. I will be playing a piece called Tarantella for you today. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
amazing. Amazing. Just seeing what we have, just a little sliver of our talent. I'm telling you, if I had like half of that little talent, I'll be on Broadway. I promise I would. But until then, we got to rely on our youth. We got to rely on the council. That's why AXO is so important for us here. And just make sure we uh, not acknowledge and make sure that we make sure that they know and understand that we are here for them in each and every way possible. Okay. So we're going to go through our golden nuggets right now. We want to make sure that everybody knows exactly what a golden nugget is. I'm going to relieve this. I'm going to kick this off to our uh, assistant secretary, Ms. Tanya LaFleur. Let, let her take this floor, let you understand what exactly the golden nuggets are for us. Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great evening. We're going to share our golden nuggets due to just some, some tidbits that we received from past presidents. Uh, across the board, across our state. So we just wanna share with you these golden nuggets that they've shared with us from their tenure of being presidents. So uh, as the screen goes across, we just wanted uh, you to take a, take a breath of what they've shared with us. Some of the, some of the nuggets that, that you can leverage with your uh, chapter, with your branch. So, as screen goes across, just take a look at these. Be transparent with your executive committee. Or just a few, always, it's not, it's not personal. Stop trying to be a committee of one. The secretary is the heart of your branch. Nothing should go out, go on and move without her or him knowing. The president is the king and executive committee aren't peasants. Look at us as a hand. We can't pick up the torch or pass the torch if all fingers aren't operating. Fingers are the standing committees, executive committee, general mem membership, and youth. So those are just a few of the golden nuggets that we received from the presidents that, uh, that we've spoken with. So hope you enjoy and take those away with you and share with your branch. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary uh, LaFleur. We appreciate the the kind words and the golden nuggets that we have here. It's so important that we make sure that we see those guidelines and we see them and we push them forward to those um, in our branch units everywhere across. We cannot do this alone. Nobody can do this by themselves. This is all a team effort. And this is what's gonna get us to go where we need to go in the future, all right? We're gonna roll right along here too, because even though we are here present and we are always present. We also have to understand that we have fallen soldiers along the way, specifically coming through this COVID season, all right? So we do have a secretary, uh, Delinda Gaskins, also president of Bullitt County Branch here to highlight those that we may have lost along the road here.
thank you guys so much uh, for the fallen soldiers that we have along the field. We're just going to give that just a brief moment of silence so that we can reflect against that and make sure that we understand the significance of those that we have lost. We also want to thank uh, First Vice President John, uh, Jonathan Johnson for uh, actually helping get those names and memorials together for us. And we definitely appreciate that. Um, we can never forget those who have come before us and those that unfortunately have left before us. We're gonna keep it moving right along, ladies and gentlemen, because we know we do have a lot to go through as far as the candidates are concerned here. Um, so to do that, we're gonna bring our Youth and College Division President Amari Fanoi uh, up to introduce our candidates, what we have and what we have going forward as far as our elections this evening. President Fanoi. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mr. H uh, Smith, for that wonderful introduction. Um, so this evening, we will hear from the candidates. Um, it, everyone will have three minutes to speak, and we will limit that to that three minutes. Um, and we will go in order as it follows on the screen. So first, for Assistant Treasurer, we will have Ms. Louise Thomas. Please step forward and remember that you have three minutes. <laughs> My name is Louise Thomas. I'm a member of the Cab County Branch NAACP. I had the privilege of serving as assistant treasurer for the last two years, and I would like to continue that to serve our uh, treasurer and the unit as a whole. Um, I'm a retiree. I worked in accounts payable uh, at Georgia Power for many years. Um, I am a, um, when I worked at Georgia Power, I worked in accounts payable, uh, you know, balancing books for, uh, monthly and yearly upward of $70 million. So I uh, know how to do stuff like that. Uh, and I like to get things, like to help the, pre uh, the uh, treasurer get the reports in on a timely, in a timely manner and accurate, accurately. Um, so I, I'm asking, asking for everyone's vote. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. And I will go ahead and go to the candidate for assistant secretary, um, Ms. Jerusa Moss. If you don't mind going ahead, I'm sorry. Um, I see several individuals from Atlanta chapter who have their, um, their hands raised. Do they have connections to Mr. Rose? Okay, he, I just text Richard. Okay, no problem. Um, I, will I will come back to him and we will go forth with the assistant secretary candidate, Ms. Jerusa Moss. Ms. Jerusa Moss, if you mind stepping forward or coming to the screen. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Jerusha Moss, and I'm on the ballot to be the Assistant State Secretary. Currently, I hold the position of Branch Secretary with the Houston County Branch 5203 here in Warner Robins in Perry, Georgia. I'm a dedicated member of our branch. The position that I hold, I've held for approximately two and a half years. I'm very passionate, dedicated, and a dependable individual. And I think if you were to speak with anyone that is familiar with me, they would, they would vouch for that as well. There are numerous skills that I possess, two minutes to name in three minutes, that would be of benefit to the organization as a whole. And if elected, I plan to put all those skills to use and probably learn some new skills as well. I am a, not only a vital team player, but I'm also a team builder. I find myself from time to time recognizing talents in others that they don't see in themselves, and I utilize those talents as, as needed. If the organization needs something and I see that we have a person there that is skilled, willing, and able to do, I try to encourage each, every, each and every individual to bring their, their assets to the forefront. And let's shine together. Again, if elected, I will utilize my expertise and talents to not only assist in our fight forward, but to also help us fight forward together. No branch, no council, no member left behind. Thank you, and I appreciate the time. Thank you so much, Ms. Moss. I will move forward to the candidates for secretary. I have Ms. Tanza Thomas first. Ms. Tanza Thomas. Good evening. Just a little background. I'm Tonza Thomas from Columbus, Georgia Branch Unit 5187, 
And of the 15 years I've been a part of this organization, for six and a half of those years, I'm your former state secretary. Greetings to all members, adult and youth and college delegates. For over 80 years, the Georgia State Conference has celebrated victories because we communicated with our membership. The Office of State Secretary is a resource and it requires more than record keeping. It connects members and allies to our work and our causes. I'm Tonza Thomas and I'm running to be your resource. As your next state secretary, together we will reconnect, rebuild and restore the Georgia State Conference. Reconnect, rebuild and restore. To reconnect, we must respectfully keep all members informed whether you are a life or regular member. To rebuild, we must open a line of communication that must be established to focus on each unit's individual requests and to ensure unit participation. We must reinstate branch secretary meetings because in the information age of COVID, communication is critical. To restore, it is imperative to have trust between our units, state conference, regional and national offices. And in the spirit of transparency, there should not be any delays in receiving unit membership cards at any time. It is not an option. I pledge to keep you informed, organized and mobilized. So join me next Wednesday, October 13th for a virtual candidate town hall at 7 p.m. So you can ask me whatever question that it is that you want because the state secretary's office is at your disposal. Thank you for your support. God bless you and God continue to bless the NAACP. Thank you so much, Ms. Thomas. Next, we will have Ms. Del or Secretary Delinda Gaskin. Good evening, everyone. I am Delinda Gaskin. I am the current state secretary, and it has been an absolute honor and pleasure to serve as secretary of the state of Georgia for the past two years. As unit secretaries, we are traditionally the record keepers of individuals and what takes place in your branch. But in the past two years, we have had a whirlwind of changes called COVID-19, where we've had to adjust in how we do our traditional meetings to go from meeting in person to become the masters of Zoom and team and group meetings, but that we're doing things virtually. And I must applaud all the units of Georgia. We have come together. We have cried, fussed, and said some words we probably shouldn't have said in the process of doing this. But in doing it, we did it together. I appreciate the fact that you were able to call me, whether it was six o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock at night, but we were able to work together to pull our units together with our virtual meetings. Additionally, as the national office has transformed and we now use the membership portal, there again, we had a major change in how we process things. So as the record keeper of membership, we had to make sure we had our trainings and be retrained because the system constantly updated. But together, we did it as a unit, as our state. We managed to make things happen along with our state administrators and the problems of a membership cards, we came together with the national office and administrators and membership cards are now flowing. They're finding all of the little glitches in the system, but we again work together as a team. The transformation, we keep up with everyone, not only the members, but the president and the entire executive committee. We keep up with the committees. We attend all committee meetings because we're ex officio, so we attend where we can. And it has been a pleasure for me to attend the executive meetings as well as each committee meeting that the state has. We've been on, I've been on those calls with them and I appreciate your welcoming me in. I would love to continue to fight forward as your state secretary and unit secretaries, we unite together that we can indeed take care of the state. The membership is the lifeline, but we are the heartbeat. So let us join together and continue to beat and keep our membership and our units alive. Thank you for your time and I solicit your votes. Thank you, Secretary Gaskin. Um, I am going to go ahead and circle back to um, Treasurer for Mr. Richard Rose. 
Um, he is slated for the candidate as treasurer. So Mr. Rose, if you don't mind, um, please coming forth. So thank you. Good evening. I'm Richard Rose, president of Atlanta branch NACP and, and I've uh, submitted, submitted as a candidate for treasurer. Um, you know, the treasurer is the chief financial officer of the Georgia State Conference, which is more than just a check writer. Uh, and we need more than a check writer in this position. Uh, we have all kind of, you know, the problems that we all have, voter suppression, deficit of black businesses with state contract, educational resources that are not enough to meet the, our community needs. Criminal justice continues to be unjust toward our communities. And of course, we had to encourage voter turnout. So we got all this work to do. So what we don't need to do is worry about missing financial reports, not having the budget, not understanding where the finances are and what we can afford to do. I pledge to be the chief financial officer of the NACP uh, State Conference. I've been a certified public accountant since I was 24 years old. I wanna use these skills and knowledge that I've attained to bring us to a new level of accountability, a new level of cooperativeness and collaboration. And I pledge to do that. Thank you, Mr. Rose, President Rose. We will now move forward to the candidates for the third vice president. First, we'll start with Ms. Rutha Jackson, if you are on the call, Ms. Rutha Jackson. Hello again. I am Reverend Dr. Rutha Jackson. I'm a native of Houston County, civil life member of this association. I'm a past president of the Houston County branch NAACP for six years. I am a veteran, retired 33 years, a teacher in Houston County school system for 24 and a half years. I am uh, married for 48 years and recently uh, widowed. I have um, two, uh, two grandsons. I have one, three daughters and one son-in-law. I am offering myself for the third vice president of this association. It is my hope and my belief that I can make a difference. I do not come to the table empty handed. I've watched and served the Georgia State Conference from 2010 to 2019 as religious affairs chair, co-chair, and as a co-coordinator for the 8th District. I see where my gifts can continue to be used to support our organization. I'm no stranger to commitment and hard work in this association. It has not been easy. We have been in some challenging situations, but together we conquered. We can rise again and regain our integrity and trust through information, mobilization, and organization as our speaker spoke on our opening night. Thus, our organization is unique because of its diversity and knowledgeable members. Together, we can harness our knowledge and energy to change the trajectory of our Georgia State Conference. We can make a difference. Justice and equality start with all of us. I'm committed to the cause and purpose of our organization. I'm committed to seeing our branches, our youth and young adults empowered by our state conference. I desire to start in the field with our branches where the real work resides to propel the state conference forward. Eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither have entered the heart of man, the things which God has powered, empowered, prepared for them that love him. Promise and possibility is ours to gain. I am. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Uh, Rev I'm sorry, Rev 
Reverend Dr. Jackson, I apologize. Um, the three minutes um, has concluded. Thank you so much. Um, next, we will have our second candidate, Ms. Gwen Westbrooks. Good evening. I am Gwinnett Westbrooks. I am running for third vice president. Um, I am the president of the Make and Build branch. Uh, I have been president for uh, eight years. I, I also past served as the uh, secretary, as the uh, chairperson of legal redress and served on the executive committee. My mother uh, at a very young age uh, prepared me for this journey. And as, as I can remember, I have been helping people um, for many years, basically all my life. I am retired from the um, now uh, atrium Navison Health, uh, where I worked there 22 years. I'm currently employed with the Department of Family and Children Services. So my entire life uh, and, and, and work has been surrounded around helping people. I'm familiar, I know what to do, uh, how to organize, um, to do the work that the NAACP needs. I have, um, I'm not afraid to, to meet the many challenges that we face. What my plan is, is to make sure that um, there's a line of communication, a line of communication in order, to, in order to organize and move this organization where it needs to be moved. I believe that we have to dedicate ourselves. Um, we are living in a, a, a world now where there's many challenges and obstacles and the NACP has prepared me over the years with the training and the, uh, the high expectations that this organization gives to prepare us for whatever challenges and obstacles that have been put before us. I want to make sure that the branch understands that we have units that are not in compliance, that need to be in compliance, because the more um, uh, branches that we have, we'll be able to challenge a lot of obstacles and, and challenge a lot of obstacles that we need to face. My promise is to you is to make sure that we, uh, to you is to make sure that we get the branches um, uh, in good standing and make sure we get them readying up to be able to be prepared to fight the battles that we are faced. I ask you to vote for me for, for third vice president. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Westbrooks. Next, we'll move on to the candidates for second vice president. And first we will have um, Ms. Rosalind Matthew. Ms. Rosalind Matthews. Yes. Greetings, brothers and sisters. I am Dr. Rosalind Matthews. And I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to share a little about my background and my campaign platform for candidacy of the second vice president, Georgia State Conference of the NAACP. Although I hail from New York, I have lived in Georgia for more than 25 years. I am a life member of the NAACP. I hold a doctorate's degree in public health leadership and I am employed by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. I currently serve as the president of the historic Henry County branch where we believe in equality for all. During my, pre during my tenure as president, I have seen the branch grow. Under my tenure, we have had more than 30 members join the branch. We have hosted several successful community outreach events to educate and inform on voters' registration, voters' education, and legal redress. We have not his, missed a beat in this COVID-19 era as we have gone to virtual seamlessly holding our branch meetings with more than an average of 40 members in attendance. I am a member of the illustrious Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and I serve as a Southern Regional member for the nominating team. I am also a member of the National Council of Negro Women, where I serve at the national level on a health equity task force, as well as the National Nominating Committee. Brothers and sisters, I have a heart for service, which is evident by my serving and retiring after 23 years in the United States military. If I am selected as your second vice president, 
I vow to work with the leadership to be engaging with the branches around and across the state of Georgia, to be transparent, to also offer solution oriented uh, act, uh, in, in interventions for the challenges that we face here in the state of Georgia. Freedom fighters, Georgia is in the spotlight. We are in a position that we need leadership in Georgia. I am willing to work with the leadership team to make that happen. I humbly ask for your vote as second vice president of the Georgia State Conference. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Matthews. Next, we will have Ms. Jereen Grimes. Good evening, Freedom Fighters. I didn't want to take anything for granted, so I wanted to come with come to you all as um, part of the Convention Planning Chair, which is another entity, but I also wanted to come to you as a member of the Executive Committee asking for you, my tenure as um, second, vice, second Vice President previously two, and two, three administrations ago, I took some time off and just served as an Executive Committee member. And now I thought that in an effort to help support and lead our future leadership back on the track that we need to be and to do the things that's important to us as a state conference, I said, let me come back to you all and try to serve you well. And I'm excited about the opportunity again to potentially be your second vice president I don't wanna take anything for granted. I wanna to continue to do the work and help support our state conference to be as excellent as it has been and will continue to be and to help move us forward. So I'm asking you all to take out the time to cast the votes. I take in nothing for granted. I would love for you to put me back into position as your second vice president so we could continue to serve the state well and do the work that's in front of us. So peace and power to you all, and thank you for your vote. Have a great evening. Thank you, Ms. Grimes. Next, we are going to hear from the candidates for the position of president of the Georgia State Conference. First, I will have attorney Gerald Griggs, please. Attorney Gerald Griggs. Thank you, Amari. And it's always a pleasure to speak to the branches. It's always a pleasure to speak to the state conference. I'm attorney Gerald Griggs, and I'm a candidate for president of the state conference. It's time to restore the state conference, to bring it into unity and justice and transparency. And that's why I've been asked to run. I've been asked to run by multiple individuals. I never foresaw this day coming, but it's time. Now, just a little bit of my background, I am a fifth generation Georgian, born and raised on Peachtree, born in this red clay, and I love this state. I'm a graduate of Woodward Academy, graduate of Emory University, and a graduate of the University of Cincinnati College of Law. I've lived in Georgia for 40 years, and only the three years that I spent in Cincinnati in law school have I left this state. I love this state. I have been a civil rights activist since my junior year in college. 1999 when we took down the Confederate flag and I've been fighting ever since. I am called the justice fighter simply because I come to you in the spirit of C.B. King. I come to you the spirit of Donnelly Hollowell. I come to you the spirit of Thurgood Marshall and the spirit of Charles Hamilton Houston and in the spirit of Constance Baker Motley. It's time for the NAACP not only to talk about its past, but to build on its future. Whether that's the Cartersville 70, whether that's taking down Confederate monuments, whether that's fighting for Rayshard Brooks and Anthony Hill and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery and uh, so many others. I have led and created the biggest marches in Georgia history, whether that's the Women's March or the Black Lives Matter marches that we had this past summer. We have to be about the business of civil rights and social justice. We also have to be about the business of defending our voting rights. We were on the front lines for 35 days, which ended in the arrest of my client Park Cannon and her freedom and the dismissal of her case. That's what I'm about. I have the experience necessary to lead the state conference. I have been the second vice president of the Atlanta branch, the first vice president of the Atlanta branch, 
the chair of the Criminal Justice Committee of the Atlanta Branch and the Communications Committee, as well as the state conference. I have also been the third vice president whose job it was to be the, the liaison to the state conference of all the branches. I'm about restoring the power to the branches, but I'm also about giving voice to the youth and college. I believe that the youth are our future and it's time for us to let them lead. So I've been asked to run, I'm ready to run. It's time to restore the transparency, integrity in the Georgia State Conference, but it's also time for us to be on the front lines. It's time for us on October the 16th to be down in Brunswick, continue to run with Ahmad. It's time for us to be on the front lines with Rayshard Brooks and all of the individuals that have succumbed. I'm sorry about that, Mr. Attorney Griggs. It has been three minutes. Um, thank you so much for that powerful speech. Um, I did make an error and I do apologize. I went straight to um, the presidential candidates versus um, the first um, vice. I will continue with the presidential candidates and I will move forward to the first vice. Um, so next I will have Mr. Johnny Jones come forth. Uh, yes, my name is Johnny Edward Jones, and I'm a candidate for president of the Georgia State Conference. I was born and raised in America's Georgia, where I marched as a child at the age of around nine to 10 years old. Joined the Air Force after graduating from high school to see the world, and they sent me to Moody Air Force Base, Bad Officer, Georgia, where I spent my uh, enlistment. Thereafter, I relocated to Atlanta and attended Clark College, where I obtained a, a, a business degree at Clark. I've been active with the Fayette County NAACP for the last 24 years, serving in various uh, capacities. I'm a life member. I was branch president from 2008 to 2016, the Obama years, and while all the time while working as a commercial airline pilot with United Airlines. Our branch sued to get district voting in Fayette County and brought the first black county commissioner, the election of the first black county commissioner ever in the county's history. I've served as first vice president with uh, Minister Ed DuBose when he was president. As president, I envision unprecedented progress for blacks in Georgia. Everything must change is the way the song goes and we must be the change that we wanna see. Georgia is not getting redder, it's not getting bluer, it's getting browner. Did you know that the brown population of Georgia is nearing 50% and growing? So we must prepare our people to reap the fruits of our ancestors' labor. Those who oppose our progress are playing chess while we play checkers. We must deliberately plan on where we want to be five, 10, 20 years from now. At some point, an election will result in Georgia electing the first black governor. A visionary leader is needed to proactively counteract the predictable white backlash. We must deliberately promote mass reverse migration of blacks to Georgia saying, come home. That's why Confederate symbols must be banished and Georgia needs to apologize for slavery. And I've studied the horrific hidden psychological impacts of slavery on our people that impacts us today. It impacts our organizations and especially the NAACP. Measures must be taken to modify the behaviors that perpetuate crippling dysfunction. I was able to help my branch overcome numerous obstacles. We must network with churches, organizations, and people, other people of color to achieve our goals. Lastly, after a successful career in aviation and the military, I'm ready for a new challenge. Are you? Thank you, Mr. Jones. You're welcome. Um, next, mm -hmm. we will move forward to um, our first vice, because I do apologize because we did skip those individuals. Um, so first, for first vice president, our candidates um, are, our first candidate is Jonathan Johnson. Mr. Jonathan Johnson, if you please come forward. Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jonathan Johnson. I'm currently uh, the first vice president of the state of the Georgia State Conference as we speak. I'm the president of the Houston County branch 
uh, president. Uh, the title of my campaign is called All In. Um, I'm uh, a subscribing Diamond Life member. Um, what, what that means is, is when you need me, I will be there. Some people are only there for the election. My goal is to bring honesty, hard work for the people back to the Georgia State Conference. I need for you, the NAACP, to vote for me, to fight for me, to pray for me, so we as a organization can continue to serve the people in this great state of Georgia. Are we fired up? Are we fired up? Are we fired up? Ready to go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Next, we'll have Ms. President Teresa Hardy. Teresa Hardy, if you please step forward. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Teresa Hardy, and I am currently the president of DeKalb County uh, Branch. And I am also the treasurer for the state, uh, Georgia State Conference. I've come to you this evening to uh, ask to, uh, for your vote to serve as your first vice president. <clears throat> as first vice president, I plan to share in on a, a formula that I use in DeKalb County, which is E3. E3 is to educate, educate our community on the issues that uh, allies beyond I also want to be able to equip our community with the resources that is needed. I'm a connector, a change agent, and have shown that to be the great thing that I can bring to the table here in the Cab County and the state of Georgia. I also want to empower, empower not only our community, but our branches. Being the president of the DeKalb County, one of the second largest branches in the state of Georgia, we have been able to mobilize, organize, and be informed of everything that needs to be done to be the leader for the, for the state of Georgia. I want to be able to utilize my professional skills. I'm an IT consultant, been doing that for 25 years. I'm also a community leader, been doing that for 21 uh, years here in DeKalb County. I also am a Christian and, and I serve as a Christian leader for Salem Bible Church. One thing I want to just leave with you, I am a youth advocate. I have been afforded the opportunity to work with Emory and Agnes Scott here in DeKalb County and being a youth uh, a mentor and, and, and also provided scholarship opportunities to all our youth, Axel and our youth council. Our youth council was formed this year and we were able to get 80 people signed up. Let me continue to use, utilize the leadership skills that I've been able to use in DeKalb County. Let it be the same source that I can actually support our president and our executive committee along with the Georgia State Conference. We are all we got. It is time for us to change intentionally and keep silent no more. And as Bishop stated, we must inform, mobilize, and organize in order to move forward. Thank you for your time. Thank you, uh, President Hardy. And I want to thank all of the candidates who were able to speak and come forth um, with your powerful speeches. And we look forward to um, hearing from you all later on. I know the election information will be sent out um, later. I will also go ahead and announce those members who are running for the member at large seats. I have Ms. Brenda Cox, Shelby Hall, Yvonne Hawks, Larry Lockie, Tanya LaFleur, Vivian Moore, Karen Renee, James Stocks, and Penny Poole. And that concludes our presentation for our candidates um, for the 2022, 2021 election. All right. Thank you so much, President Fanoy, for that presentation, uh, for moderating that as well as you did. 
I'm extremely uh, thankful for you and uh, thankful for everything you've done for the youth and college division uh, this year. Uh, I want to uh, say uh, big things for the, the candidates here. We wish you all good luck and good uh good uh, positive vibes going through this. We uh, understand and we appreciate everything that we have um, going forward. And just to tackle on that just a little bit, we do want to make sure that we very, very much hit on those memberships and those five game changer committees that's going to happen with these elections. So we definitely want to get everybody involved in that, <clears throat> excuse me, in the economic development and also the education of health uh, uh, committees to make sure that we're re very much so getting those people involved, getting our guys involved in that uh, environment and the political action committees, uh, making sure we get those filled and making sure we have actions planned against those because that's going to be extremely important for us. One of the big things we're going that we have that we're trying to tackle now is uh, the adversity that we have in housing and making sure that that committee is tackled with our freedom fighters as much as we can push. We have to push these things out because even though the elections are going, people are getting thrown out of their houses as well at the same time. So we have to make sure that we tackle this with the utmost speed, the utmost importance. So I thank the candidates also uh, for their speeches. Thanks you, thank you for everything that you're doing and what you want to do going forward. All right. For closing remarks here, I want to thank you all for being so patient, so kind with us. We will have our first vice president, uh, President Jonathan Johnson, come up for us to just give us some closing remarks and make sure that we uh, set this thing off right. President Johnson. Basically, um, what I want to do, I would thank, uh, thank you all for being on the Zoom call tonight. Um, thank the candidates and everyone. I'd like to thank the units as well. Thank you for giving of your time and your resources to help make this a great organization. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. And I'd like to thank you for that tonight. All right, thank you, President Johnson. <clears throat> Uh, for that. I want to just pivot this and turn it to uh, our planning uh, committee chair, uh, Ms. Grimes, if you could, if you, if you could just come up, uh, give us a few more closer remarks, if you may, please. I'd like to just say thank you all for joining us. Um, we know that we're in some unique space and sometimes Zooming and Zooming all day and trying to log in. We apologize for any technical glitches but we really want to say thank you to all of you, all the candidates. Um, thank you, Kyle, for moderating. Amari, thank you for, we think our youth are our future, and we are so proud to pass the gavel on to you all so that you guys can help lead us into the forward. But what I want to remind everybody that we don't stop. This was day two. We have day three. Tomorrow is an opportunity for us to shine the, the light on our stars in our state. And what we have identified from a convention planning standpoint is that our units and our foot soldiers that are on the ground are the stars in our state. And so tomorrow morning, we kick off at 10 a.m. Salute to the stars in our state. So we wanna thank you branches, you unit leaders, you unit members for joining us tonight. This was some great information. And I look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We have a great day in store. We're only going to be online for probably about an hour and a half. Um, we also want you all to know that the unit, that the youth and college division, they will kick off at 11. So if you have an active or if you, if you just want to tune in, the youth and college division will have a segment of some very powerful information. Amari, I see you. You want to say something to add to that? We encourage you to participate. I want to close out by saying peace and power. And I'm gonna give it to Amari. Um, good evening, everyone. I apologize about that. Um, we will actually kick off tomorrow at 10 a.m. 
um, and we will we'll kick off with um, our training for our officers, and then we'll have a training when it comes to voter, voter mobilization. Um, so we we also should only be on the phone for about two hours. Our election has always also been delayed. Um, unfortunately, I would not be able to join you all tomorrow. I will be taking LSAT. Um, but this has been an amazing two-year tenure, um, six years of advocacy with the Georgia Youth in College. So I do thank you all for the um, commitment. Do thank you all for the hard work that you have put in and, and aiding us and supporting us. And I look forward to the future for the Georgia Youth in College. And one more thing, it's very important. We've got some business of the NAACP that we have to take place. We hope that we will have moved beyond COVID. And by 2022, there's an opportunity for committee chairs for our time and place, as well as our resolution. So there will be some business, some very important business that will take place tomorrow. So I encourage everybody to tune in and I look forward to seeing you and you all be safe and take care of each other. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we do have our closing prayer. If we have Bishop elect James Vance, if you can just lead us out uh, for the evening. Thank you. Um, First, let me say that this has been a blessing um, to witness continual fortitude and intestinal birthing of vision and determination. In the book of Amos, the fifth chapter, the 24th verse, you find these words, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. That touches me because I want all of us to remember water always seeks its destination and no obstacle can stop it. It goes around, it goes under, it goes over, it goes through, but it always reaches its final destination. We are like water. Gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you once again for this incredible opportunity. We thank you for what you are birthing and burning within us. We thank you, God, for all of our foremothers and forefathers whose shoulders we stand on. We thank you most of all for your grace and your mercy as you continue to remind us that we are not done, that we have the victory, that we can stand flat-footed and declare we're informed, we're mobilizing, we're organizing, and we will win. Father, we ask you to watch over each and every person present, their house, their family, and all of those connected to us directly and indirectly. And we look forward to what you will bring forth yet ahead of us. We thank you in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we say, amen. And so it is. Amen. 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 So it is. So it is. We want to thank you all so much for the day two of our 79th annual Georgia State Conference Convention. We want to make sure you come in, tune in at 10 o'clock in the morning so we can go ahead and get day three started. I bid you all a good night, great night. Be safe. God bless and God bless the Georgia NAACP.